Hello everybody and welcome back to some more Mata Minecraft. Today we're going to be checking out some simple ways of how to do ore processing with different kinds of mods. So how I like to process ores is to double some of them by crushing and then smelting them. Some of them require some special processing and some of them I want to crush and or fortune 3. So here I split up all of the ores that you can crush or fortune and I suggest that for all of these you just do some basic regular crushing because you're not gonna need more than resources than you're gonna get from these even if you just get have a constant flow of ores you're gonna have plenty of resources coming from those and if you want to get a tiny bit more of out of your prosperity uh, ore and draconium ore you can fortune these because draconium ore turns into only two draconium dust in the pulverizer and you can get much much more if you fortune it and then smelt it so that is just the exception there for regular smelting i have split up the minecraft ores thermal foundation ores mechanism you get osmium and then nuclear craft you get all of these and then also yellowite from extreme reactors and for special processing you need to specially process redstone so you can get nickel and platinum efficiently processed and we're gonna I'm gonna explain that more up here when we get to that so let's go check out some of the simple ways and I will also show you how you can set all of these up so the simplest one is thermal expansion and ender IO because those require zero conduits and or any other item of transport cable so over here you can shift and then left click to reset all of the sides then you can turn on auto input you can say input from the top and you should see ores are gonna start coming in and then you can auto output to the right you make sure you set it on the orange channel here or orange color and then it's gonna output everything into this chest and this guy needs to be on auto input you can then shift left click left click right click a couple times and you get that so this will then provide you with double gold up here wonderful so ender AO, simpler than that you just click on the little gear here you can I believe right click to do pull and then on the right side here you need to do push and then here you do with your left mouse button you can turn around so you can then right click twice to pull and right click uh, sorry I said pull <laughs> just right click once and then double click on top to push there we go and then for mechanism you need some conduits because these machines cannot auto input but they can auto eject so we're gonna set the back side to be input the right side to be output so it needs to be blue and red and then here we're gonna come to the conduit we're gonna right click set extract always active on the green channel and then we can enable insert on the green and we disable the extract so that should start putting in the gold and then we can set here uh, the output and you have to turn auto eject on for which you can click this button here on top and that should auto eject the gold in here then we need to extract it out of here into this guy and we do not need the conduit up top so we're gonna say extract always active and then we need to come to the energite smelter set up the back side to be input right side to be output and auto eject sorry output up top because we have the chest up top and auto eject on and then we can set an insert here like so and that should be processing the gold wonderful then we have actually additions which I wouldn't really suggest it is processing twice as fast if you turn auto split on and here it also processes twice as fast but again you need conduits for for the processing so we're just gonna do the same thing that we did before that's gonna start processing there and then we can here extract on another channel so you let's say red we're gonna extract always active insert on red here and that should start putting the gold in here and then we're gonna extract on black insert on black here and then we're gonna extract on white and insert on white here like so so that is gonna go from chest to, cr to crusher from crusher to chest from chest to furnace from furnace to chest and you should be getting gold in here and this is actually decently fast which is nice okay so nuclear craft has the most complicated convoluted thing ever if you want to just use the manufactory to pulverize and then use any other furnace like that one or that one or that one or that one feel free to do so you can even just use a manila furnace but if we want to go strictly nuclear craft machines we're going to have a tiny bit of a thing that we have to do so we're going to extract on here 
and insert into the manufactory. Uh, and then we're gonna extract out of the manufactory on channel red, and we're gonna insert in this chest, just so we can keep uh, a backlog if this machine is not gonna process it fast enough. So then we're gonna extract on black, and we're gonna insert into the melter here, which is gonna start producing as soon as this finishes. It's gonna produce molten gold, which we're then gonna click here on the condo on the fluid conduit, and we're gonna extract it into here. So let's just do this and this beforehand, just to turn it off. So we're gonna extract on green, always active, and that should insert it into here, whenever this is processed, okay? And then we're gonna say extract on red, and we're gonna insert here on red to this guy, and then we need to extract on white, insert on white, like so, okay? So that basically means that all of the gold that gets processed is gonna go into the melter, get smelted, put into the tank, and then extract it out of the tank and put into the ingot former. So there it goes. It should have been extracted. Hello? Extract, oh, always active. There we go, you saw it happen. But it went, goes directly into the ingot former and gets processed into the ingots. And this is incredibly slow and it makes a whole lot of particles. So I would not suggest doing, that, but doing this, but I just wanted to show you. Okay, so all of this could be done even more compact. You don't really need the chest in here in the middle, but generally a pulverizer when you get it upgraded is gonna be faster than the redstone furnace. So I suggest having the chest here in the middle to catch anything, anything and everything that gets pulverized and you can even grab it, uh, grab the pulverized bits to turn it into alloys if you wanted to. Okay, so that covers all of the crushing plus smelting. So then we need some special processing. <clears throat> so the redstone, we're gonna pulverize into redstone and cinnabar. And you're gonna do that by doing this auto output, auto output on the right. Uh, and I believe I didn't set up a capacitor bank here. Hold on, we have capacitor banks. Boom, boom, okay. So we're gonna actually stop you for the moment because we need some augments and specifically we need the auxiliary sieve augment. So we're gonna grab a couple of those and for this guy, you're gonna need to upgrade it. So you're gonna need some kits and I would suggest getting to the resonant tier because then you can put in four augments, like so, which are gonna increase the chance of a secondary product, which is cinnabar when you process redstone in a pulverizer. So if we turn the redstone to ignored, it should start processing this and getting us cinnabar. We currently have, I believe, a stack in here, but you can see we're getting more and more. And then you're gonna take this cinnabar that you're getting from pulverizing the redstone, and you're gonna bring it over here to these induction smelters. And you're gonna take nickel ore and cinnabar ore and process it through the induction smelter so you can get 100% chance of getting platinum when you process nickel and when you process iridium you get 100% chance of getting iridium and also platinum. To set up the induction smelters they have a lovely feature called the metallurgical flux slot which is going to lock this left slot to be only cinnabar and other types of items in that sense so if you just shift left click and set auto output enabled it's going to import cinnabar and iridium ore into the right slot and then process it and you just need to set both outputs to be the right side and do the exact same thing here so we're going to output to the right, input from the left, and that will process your nickel and your cinnabar into corresponding spot, uh, ingots. And I decided to put in drawers here because it's a bit more easy to see visually. And here I didn't want to set up all of the different drawers for all of the different ores because you get the idea. So here, with processing the gold, okay. We're the induction smelter is a wonderful machine because of this metallurgical flux slot, because if you didn't have this, the machine will try to import from the top slot of the drawer first before inputting anything else. So it would input two sets of iridium ore and not do anything. But if you have this metallurgical flux slot enabled, like so, you can then auto input enabled left side and you can see it imports cinnabar and iridium ore and gets it processed nicely. And you can do the exact same thing here on the bottom, set it on the orange and the blue and auto input 
and you process the nickel and the iridium into iridium ingots and platinum ingots, which is amazing. And if you have enough redstone coming in and enough pulverizers processing redstone, you shouldn't ever run out of cinnabar and you're not gonna get that much iridium and nickel for it to run out anyway. So that is the neatest way to process ores, in my opinion, with thermal expansion or NRAO sag mills and alloy smelters are also really nice to just do the regular crushing and smelting. Those are my two go-to options. Mechanism is good, but if you wanna dive into or tripling or quadrupling or, or quintupling, please let me know down in the comments if you wanna see a tutorial for all of that. I think there's already a plenty a plenty amount of you of tutorials for this but if you want to see me do it let me know down in the comments and we'll we'll get that done possibly next time but using actually additions or uh, nuclear craft i wouldn't really recommend because actually additions requires a whole lot of steps before you can get to this for starting out just out of the bat thermal expansion then if you want to upgrade to Ender.io, once you get some grains of infinity, that could be also a thing to do, but thermal expansion is just the best way to go, in my opinion. So I think with that, I will finish off the tutorial, and I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I'm hoping you enjoyed this tutorial video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. You can also subscribe to see new videos. You can support me on Patreon as well if you want. And if you have any ideas for what tutorials I should do next, please leave them down in the description. I would love to hear what you guys want to learn. And with that, thank you again. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a great one. Bye-bye.